All right, everybody, welcome back to the new news. It's been a while since I was here to record one of these episodes. So something I've been excited about, I'm super excited to get back uh, here with Andrew. We'll be talking about Cardinals getting on a little bit of a win streak lately. They've won five in a row. It's their first five game win streak of the season. They've won eight of their last 10. Uh, so it's been a really encouraging stretch of baseball. We'll get to touch on that. And then obviously the trade deadline is looming. It's at the end of this month. We've only got about two weeks, actually a little less than that now between the Cardinals and the trade deadline. So we're going to talk about their plans. Are they still sellers? Uh, we'll address that moving forward. And then obviously there's a big stretch between now and the deadline. The Cardinals will play the Cubs twice, uh, eight games against the Cubs. So when you only get 13 games against a divisional opponent, obviously eight is well over half of that. So almost all of our meetings with the Cubs come in the next two weeks. So we'll discuss that as well coming up. Uh, I guess the most important thing right now is how the Cardinals have been playing. Like I said, they've won five in a row. This was only their second sweep of the entire year in their first at home against Miami. The Cardinals looked really good in this series. Andrew, was there anything that really stuck out to you uh, about their performance? Yeah, the defense has looked really, really solid. Jordan Walker made a fantastic catch the other day, which is something I don't think I've been able to say at all this season, which is really good. Nolan Arenado had a couple of really good plays bouncing back from what's been definitely the worst defensive year of his career. Um, we're doing the little things right, finally probably a little bit too late for that. We'll get into that um, later yeah. down the line, but we're winning close games against the Marlins, which is a team that wins a lot of close games, which is a really, really encouraging sign. Sure. We got to Sandy Alcantara, which uh, made me pretty happy. Um, don't like to see um, the fact that we gave him up for pretty much nothing, but uh, here we are. Uh, yeah. And yeah, sweeping the Marlins is definitely a really good sign. Taking two or three from Washington, probably should have won that first game. Um, but uh, post all-star break there's really nothing bad to say about the way the Cardinals have been playing it's just a little bit too late unfortunately yeah I, I was kind of looking at our our games that we've played recently and obviously since the break the Cardinals are five and one going back to their last 10 they've won eight of those 10 um, and even going back to the beginning of July the Cardinals have only lost six games this month I think they're 10 and six the unfortunate part is of the games that they've lost one two, three, four are completely on the bullpen, right? The Cardinals blew two games late in Miami, got walked off. Then they blew a five-run lead in game one against the White Sox. 5-0 lead suddenly evaporated, and you saw them lose 8-7. And then obviously the game against Washington um, was a real bummer as well. So it's just really disappointing to see, even when the Cardinals are playing great baseball, right? The rotation over this stretch has like a 2-4 ERA. That's among the best in baseball. The rotation's been the problem all year. Um, you know, even, even the offense is, is in high gear. They're scoring almost six runs a game in July. That's really, really good. That's elite. It just, the bullpen though, continuously, the Cardinals have blown almost 50% of their save opportunities this year. They blew like eight save opportunities all of last year. They've already blown 20 this year or 21, I think. So you just, you can't get away with that. Um, it's a real shame because while this feels like too little, too late, Maybe if they'd won, uh, you know, those four games and then the one they blew in Houston over the last few weeks, we'd actually be talking about a Cardinals team that's only five games back right now. Yeah, one bull, uh, the Cardinals have been making a lot of bullpen moves. Uh, they signed Ryan Tapera. I wanted to talk about that signing, but he just got DFA'd, so I guess there's nothing really to talk about. Um, but the Cardinals also DFA'd Hennessy Cabrera, who's been with the team since 2019. Definitely yeah. not a very ceremonious end to his Cardinals career. Um, and we just picked up two journeymen, like 30 plus year old relievers and optioned them to triple A, yep. which is not great. I think that's indicative that the Cardinals are still planning to sell the deadline. We just want innings eaters um, and we're pretty much willing to let anyone pitch for a couple of games. And if they're as bad as Tapera was um, in the two appearances that he made, then we just let him go and try someone new. Um, so what do you think about the, the Cabrera DFA? The Cabrera DFA is really disappointing. Hennessy's Cabrera throws 99 miles an hour from the left side. Enough said. Like that, that should be a really good MLB arm. Uh, he has electric stuff. He had like a 44% swing strike rate on his slider. So basically half of every slide, like half of the sliders he threw generated a whiff. That's elite. That's among the best sliders in all of baseball. The problem with Cabrera is he couldn't locate his fastball for strikes this year. So he was walking about five batters per nine innings, which is just horrendous and it meant that even a guy who can generate swings and misses basically whenever he wants by throwing a pitch that's unhittable and guys are gonna swing at it the problem is he still can't get outs because he walks the walks the house 
Um, so it's really disappointing to see Cabby go because he'd been a really effective reliever for the Cardinals at times. Um, at the beginning of last year, Cabby was unreal. He was one of the best relievers in the NL to start the season and everything changed all of a sudden. And no one knows why he lost his control. He seems like the type of guy that's going to go somewhere else. And some analytics department is going to figure out how to turn him into another, like a dominant shutdown setup, man. So I really wish the Cardinals had been able to get that out of him because you just don't see 99 from the left side very often. Yeah. There's like a, what, seven day window for, for the Cardinals to trade him. It's been like three or four days. Hasn't yeah. it? So I, he probably is just going to get like claimed off waivers or, or dropped for nothing. So that's a little bit unfortunate to see. He was a name at the deadline that I thought we could get at least something for him. Like the, like the Sosa uh, Romero trade last year where we kind of, yeah, we're probably going to DFA Sosa. So, um, uh, I was hoping Romero is super good. Romero's probably our best lefty right now. Yeah. Well, that's been awesome. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with Cabby, it just, it's disappointing. And Cabby's definitely going to get claimed off waivers. Like, it, it's almost like implausible to me that no one would take a flyer on a guy who, again, has incredible stuff and high velocity. That's what teams are looking for right now in back end relievers. I mean, yeah, this looks like a storybook Dodgers or Rays pick this guy up and then he turns into a closer, all-star closer type guy, you know? I, I feel like we could be looking back on this in like two years and be like, oh, there's the next Zach Allen or the next like Randy Rosarena type player that the Cardinals let go for nothing. No, nah, I'd be an Adolis Garcia type move. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I hope some like bad team, I hope like the Nationals, because it'll go through the bottom of the league first. So I hope the Nationals claim him or something and then I don't have to worry about that. The last thing I want is for him to slide to like a really good team and then see someone else figure out how to use him because he's talented. Like Hennessy Cabrera, if he doesn't walk people, is a really good pitcher. But I don't know. He hasn't been able to figure out walks here. The control was awful, abysmal this year. At multiple times this season, and especially last season, there are just outings where he comes out and he has no idea where the ball is going, and it's just out of control. I think – do you remember that one call recently – or it was, it was probably late last year where he was like throwing all over. I think it was against the Phillies and he almost hit someone in the head and their announcer said, right now is just not a major league caliber pitcher. I think it was him. And that's just how it's felt. Even with his elite stuff, Heyman said that. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah. Even with his elite stuff, yeah, Heyman's kind of a clown, but even with his elite stuff, if he can't locate, it's terrible. Talking, speaking of John Heyman. Okay. I've, I've been seeing his stuff about Arnado getting traded. And I just like want once and for all to refute that it's not happening. I, <laughs> Jeff Jones has covered this plenty, but Arnado is not going anywhere. And if he does, Jeff promised us he'd swim across the Mississippi. So I want to That was Goldie. That was Goldie. But uh, I was imagine Goldie. he'd do the same for, for Arnado. I thought it was either one. Speaking of Arnado and not getting moved, let's, let's put together a new news list of untouchables, right? Who do we think has no chance of getting traded or who do we think the Cardinals won't even listen to offer wise? I think that list starts with three players. I think most people agree it's Goldie Arenado and Jordan Walker are three guys that absolutely aren't getting moved. Uh, I want to add on players from there and see if we can build sort of a list of guys who we're sure are going to be here both after the trade deadline and after next off season. Yeah. I think Wayno is not getting traded, but that's not, <laughs> that's really besides the point. Um, <laughs> Ryan is on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Contreras probably not getting traded. Um, Lars Newpar, I think Derek Gould said the Cardinals really value him, um, his international appeal and just his play. Look at this baseball savant page. Yeah. You can see he's gotten really unlucky this year. Um, the numbers don't really add up to to what the, the projected metrics all, all show. Um, I know we've had some debate with people on Twitter on whether or not Lars Newpar should be moved at the trade deadline. Um, some people have, have said that he should be dealt for like a high high tier arm. Not sure I agree with that because I think he's our most valuable outfielder at this moment. Um, not named Jordan Walker, of course. Um, yeah. But like all around, I think he's he's still our best outfielder. Um, I don't know. Dylan Carlson's a name that I've been hearing thrown around a lot. So he's probably not on that untradeable list. But I, I've said a couple of times that. I think Dylan Carlson, if he gets moved at the trade deadline, is going to be the next Randy Rosarena, the next Lane Thomas, Adolis Garcia type player that people are looking back on. Like, why did we move this guy for some random pitcher who was yeah. very good? So I, I do think I think that the DC situation is different than any of those situations, though. 
with a Rosarena, he actually did not get a chance in St. Louis. All a Rosarena did was hit at Memphis. He had an OPS over a thousand, didn't get a chance, was moved for personal reasons. I'm pretty sure that if he hadn't like it, not saying it was a terrible thing, not saying the Cardinals didn't react poorly, but the stuff with Mike Schilt in the locker room, I think that's why he was shipped out. Um, I think it was a terrible way to handle the situation on all ends. And he just did not get a chance in St. Louis. He only got like 37 plate appearances here. Um, so I think DC has had like 1400 career plate appearances. Um, and so there's definitely a camp of people that has emerged that now thinks this is who Dylan Carlson is as a ball player. They think he is just a, a very average player who does a lot of things right and has some positional flexibility. I'm still in the group that thinks that Dylan Carlson is better than he's showed so far. I think he can definitely improve as a player and, and still has the potential to be a star, but I can understand why people would believe differently. Adolis Garcia just was here. was absolutely abysmal. He was as bad as Justin Williams as a Cardinal. And I mean, if you don't remember that guy, it's because he was horrible. He was worse than Austin Dean. And then <laughs> Deaner Deaner. And then, um, the random know, Cardinals around here catching strays today. I know, I know. I like Austin Dean, actually. I was a big Deaner fan. Um, but yeah, like Adolis Garcia, the whole league pass on him. I don't think that's similar to the Dylan Carlson situation. And then Lane Thomas, it's the same thing. Like he didn't get a ton of chances here, but in the chances he got, he was abysmal, right? So I think that I, I think Dylan Carlson is different than those guys. Um but I don't know. I, I don't think it'd be the right move to trade him right now either because I'm still a believer in him. But also I understand the people that say the Cardinals need to commit to three outfielders and just move forward with that outfield. And, and who are those guys? I mean, I personally would roll with an outfield of Carlson, Newbar, and Walker. Personally, Walker's defense just doesn't cut it for me. I know we've made Nolan Gorman comparisons and he's really improved um, this year. Uh, from his defense last year, but Walker's defensive numbers are a lot worse than Gorman's were last year. And I yes. think we had two solid defensive outfielders in Carlson and Newpar that would really, really um, ease the weight off Jordan Walker's shoulders. Um, I don't know. Carlson in 2021 finished third in rookie of the year voting hit to a 780 OPS 115 OPS plus. And last year was not great for him. He was hurt a lot of last year, had a shoulder issue. I think that he was not leading. He, he didn't lead it uh, or he let on that. It wasn't as bad as it actually was. Yeah. Um, and this year kind of similar situation. He's been on the aisle a lot and he just hasn't gotten consistent playing time this year. He's been overshadowed a lot by Burleson who I'm not really sure should be getting that playing time over him right now. Um, O'Neill's going to be starting over him for the foreseeable future. And I think that's probably to play O'Neill into a trade somewhere else. Yes. Um, so I'm not, I'm not in the camp of people that's like, why is O'Neill starting? He shouldn't be starting. He's terrible. And Carlson's better. I think O'Neill is starting solely to play himself into a trade. Um, and if we trade Carlson right now, his value is really, really low. I've heard Yankee fans on Twitter say um, that they don't even want him. They're like, we should fire Brian Cashman if he if he like touches Dylan Carlson at all. And I was like, okay, I mean, if that's what people think, fans are driving me nuts lately. Oh my gosh, can we just take a moment? Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, that trade simulator website. I complained about it last week, but it's it's not it's not the best it's not the best thing in the world. No, if, if one more of those makes it into my Twitter feed, I might just have to delete the app. It's like, there's a way to use it properly. And about 0.01% of the people on Twitter using it are using it that way. So it should just get like, we should just not allow that on Twitter anymore. You're, you're telling me that the Cardinals shouldn't trade Steven Matz for, for Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. And that would be like a win for the Angels. Dude, hey, if the trade simulator says, then that's, that's probably true. Yeah. I would believe <laughs> I mean, when like Judge is a negative 33 and Arenado is a negative 45 or whatever it says, like Arenado is the best third baseman in the sport. There's no way. Yeah, I see Yankees. I mean, maybe, maybe the Rockies were onto something. I don't know. I see Yankees fans putting together trades for like Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt and Lars Newbar, and it just cost them like one prospect and Josh Donaldson <laughs> or like IKF for Arenado straight up. <laughs> I'm just saying Jeff Breidich was was probably cooking with that app. But um, anyway. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's so bad. But oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I think 
I, I like what you said about O'Neal. Um, I think that's really important for Cardinal fans to understand. I've seen a lot of people, like you said, outrage that O'Neal's getting starts over DC. I think the reason, again, like you said, is to play him into a trade. If O'Neal comes back, shows he's healthy, it's kind of a showcase. Look what we have. This outfielder's healthy again. He's hitting. Come trade for him. And I think this could be really good for the Cardinals if they can actually get something out of Tyler O'Neal at this point. I, I do like Tyler O'Neal. I invested in a Tyler O'Neal jersey before the season. Unfortunately, that looks like it's not going to pay off for me. Um, very, very bummed about that. It's like one of the blacked out ones. I really like it, but you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, I think he needs to be gone because he just doesn't fit into the Cardinals plans moving forward. I do think they have to choose three outfielders. And I like the ones you selected there, Carlson, Newt Barr and Walker. If there's anybody, I mean, Burleson, probably an option. Chase Davis, the recent first-round pick, maybe an option at some point. But Chase Davis isn't going to be ready for at least 2024, maybe even part of 2025. I mean, he's an advanced college bat, but come on, you're not just going to plug him into your lineup on opening day. So, right. The one thing that really muddies this, though, is the fact that Brendan Donovan can play the outfield. I've seen a lot of people suggesting that he should become the left fielder. What, what's your take on that? Um, Brennan Donovan has been really good right now. He's a exclusively a DH cause he can't throw the ball, um, which yes. is pretty unfortunate cause he's a super utility guy. You don't want him DHing every day. And he had a setback today. Yeah, I did see that. Um, but Brennan Donovan has quietly become one of the Cardinals best bats just period. Um, and I really, really like him. I don't think he should be traded, but, um, I don't know. Uh, I think, you're talking about choosing three outfielders. We have to choose between Tommy Edmund and Brendan Donovan at this trade deadline. Um, and I think yes. the majority consensus is, and I think I agree that Tommy Edmund is the one that, that gets traded at the deadline. Um, Brendan Donovan has more years of control and he's just too valuable. Um, he can play like six more positions than Tommy. Edmund. That's probably not the case, but um, he's working his way into being probably our leadoff bat um if Lars Newbar is yeah. going to be batting lower in the order which I think I actually like that a little bit more um finished third in rookie of the year last year and is having an even, be even better year this season uh the power numbers mm -hmm. up 11 home runs uh, as opposed to five from last year I really really like Brendan Donovan and I think personally this might be a little bit of a hot take but if Mason Wynn isn't ready stick him at shortstop next year and see what happens um I think defensively he can pretty much play anywhere uh shortstop's probably the most defensively demanding position but if you stick him at shortstop which should really be an issue yeah donovan's played shortstop with at least some degree of success in the past i mean he won the gold glove for the utility position he can play seven positions that's super impressive and i i think i agree with you you do have to choose between donovan and edmund at this deadline right because if you look at the cardinals middle infield situation right now it's it's really crowded you've got your two starters are probably Edmund and Gorman right now at short and second. Donovan's a super sub who you need to get into the lineup because any way you slice it, he's the card's third best bat right now. Gorman's streaky enough that I wouldn't give him that honor. I would say it's probably Donovan. And the on-base, the, the walk rate's so great. I think Donovan's, it has to be in the lineup, right? He, he does so much for you offensively. And then you've also got Paul DeYoung to consider too, who is having a very good year for Paul DeYoung. OPS is right around 750. Um, he's hitting about one home run every 17 at bats, which isn't half bad for a guy like him. I can't really complain about Paul DeYoung's year. So unless you can move him, and I think with his defense and then the option, maybe you can trade him, but you still have to make a decision and commit to one of them because win's going to come up and win's going to be the shortstop. So only one of Edmund or Donovan is going to is going to become that infield sub and Donovan's ability to play first base. I think that also gives him the edge here. So, yeah, I'm with you. I would prefer to trade Edmund. And I think Edmund's a really attractive option for other clubs anyway. Edmund does everything right. He is a gold glove caliber shortstop. He's a platinum glove caliber second baseman, as we've seen in the past. I mean, like he led all of baseball in DRS a couple of years ago. He's a fantastic player. Um, he, he's one of the best base runners in the league, good contact guy, lots of energy. I think that's the move the Cardinals should make. Yeah. And it's also worth noting that when Mason Wynn comes up, Nolan Gorman is probably going to get a lot of that DH time. So yeah, 
Um, Donovan will actually probably play a lot of second base, but just in case that, you know, the Cardinals go on and get a DH, uh, not naming names. Um, but um, we can slide Donovan over to shortstop uh, if we have to. Well, the other problem with Gorman at DH right now, though, is the Contreras issue. They're pretty non-committal on Contreras being the primary catcher. And I know we said you said earlier in the episode that you're convinced Contreras is going to stay. I've heard some trade talks surrounding Contreras lately. I was listening to a balloon party with uh, Tim McKernan this morning on 101 ESPN. They do great work over there. And he was talking about he feels very strongly that the Cardinals should try to move Contreras at this deadline. You probably would have to sweeten the deal. You'd probably have to take on a little bit of salary. But Contreras is a bat-first catcher right now who's trending towards being a DH in his 30s. I love Contreras, and I love having a living legend from the Chicago Cubs on my team. But <laughs> I, I, there's some truth to what he's saying here. If Contreras is going to become the DH, that's really going to limit the Cardinals moving forward. He was signed to be a catcher, and if he's not going to be the catcher, he's getting overpaid, and you committed too many years to a guy to be a DH in his 30s. Yeah, I know Houston was one of the teams that was really interested in him uh, last offseason. Yeah. I know Houston has Martin Maldonado um, at catcher, who's v- very defense first, um, but he just can't swing the bat at all. Um, yeah. And that team, I think, is a team that's lacking a lot of offensive firepower right now. I think Altuve and Alvarez are both hurt. So I think that could be a good fit. Um, and I know they probably offer Contreras more, and Contreras shows the Cardinals. So I, I don't know if if he's still worth the money that they were willing to give him, but yeah. if we could flip him to Houston, that might be okay. Maybe just get like a minor prospect or something back. Um, Cause Herrera has been really good. I know they don't probably don't want to trade Kisner because he's really good, uh, good presence in the clubhouse. Um, and I've really liked what I've seen out of Herrera, but these last couple of days, he's really, really shown that he's developed past um, his struggles last year. Yeah, oh, for sure. Herrera has been one of the best uh, catchers at any level of the minor leagues this year in any organization. And the Cardinals have ridiculous catching depth for what it's worth all the way down um, from Contreras and Kisner and Herrera, who are all pretty solid options right now. Like Kisner's had a really good year and it shouldn't be overlooked all the way down through the system, including um, Pages and, you know, Jimmy Crooks, the third and Leo Bernal. I mean, it's, it's really impressive what they've been able to do. Uh, from an organizational standpoint. But yeah, I I think you're right. It's just, I don't know. I think trading Kisner is possible. I think he has more value than he's had at any point since he came up. Maybe you could move him. Like a team like Cleveland, I could see them wanting a Kisner. Um, I don't know, maybe that you could match up for a Shane Bieber type of deal with Kisner, Edmund, and an outfielder. But that's just me talking. I don't think they'll trade him because the AL Central is so bad. But I don't know. I I think ideally, in my opinion, the Cardinals sort of have a timeshare next year where Contreras starts about 80 games. Herrera gets about 80 games. Kisner is moved off. I'm sorry. I love Kisner, but I think you got to pick and you can't do the whole three catchers thing. And then maybe if, you know, Contreras could learn to play the outfield There was a lot of pushback against that early in the year, but it's something he did with the Cubs at times. He played outfield and he can be your DH for 30 to 40 games next year. And you can get his bat in the lineup a lot, but I don't want him in the, I don't want him in the DH hole constantly because I I really want Gorman to be able to do that so that I don't know. It's such a, such a muddy, uh, such a muddy group of position players. And there's so much overlap positionally and the Cardinals just have too many bats. Yeah, I mean, I don't like talking about 2024 DH giving that giving that job to anybody. But um, anyhow, uh, we sh- I think we should come up with uh, five players that are untouchable at this deadline, not like the obvious ones, and then like five that we think the Cardinals uh, should trade. So I think at the top of our list uh, for for trade candidates, we got to go with Tyler O'Neill and and uh, not Nolan Gorman, uh, Tyler O'Neill and Tommy Edmond. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think. Those are two guys that aren't on expiring contracts um, that deserve a look, right? Tommy Edmond, he has a full year after this remaining, if I'm correct. So that's, you know, you're trading for about 220 games of Tommy Edmond, which like he's a five-war player. That's a really valuable guy in today's game. 
I think Tommy Edman could get you a legitimate prospect haul, or he could be the guy you trade for good pitching. I think O'Neill has some value because of what he's done in the past, but the injuries are just really scary. I don't really know. He's such a wild card right now. I also think um, to add to that list, I think another guy is probably Jack Flaherty. Really obvious, but I think the Cardinals have to move him. I think if you don't move Jack Flaherty at this deadline, it's a terrible miss. Yeah, I think Flaherty, Montgomery, Hicks are all guys that you have to trade. Um, Another guy that I think should potentially get moved is Giovanni Gallegos. I know Mm. um, I know you are a little bit higher on him than I am, but I just don't think he has what it takes to be a high leverage reliever. Like I saw what he did in the World Baseball Classic um, for Mexico, trying to close out Japan. And I was like, there's I was like, first of all, there's no way Japan's not winning this game. And second of all, this is indicative. Like once I saw that he blew the game in the fashion that he did, I was like, this is indicative of what he's going to do this season. It's not going to be pretty. Well, I think I think to be fair, Gallegos has been one of the players, and I, I don't often drag Marmol through the mud, but I think Gallegos is the most mismanaged player on this roster. And here's what I mean by that. To anyone, even a casual fan who watches the Cardinals every once in a while, it's pretty obvious when Gallegos comes into the game, either he's nails or he is awful. And with Gallegos, when it rains, it pours. And that's why when Gallegos gives up one home run, he almost always gives up two. He has had three multi-home run outings this year. That's really bad. At the same time, he's had a ton of lockdown outings this year. He's got some saves. He's had so many, he's got a ton of holds. A guy goes, when he's right, is one of the best relievers in the division, if not the league. Gallegos has been a great high leverage reliever for like five years. You don't find that very often. Those guys don't grow on trees. Relievers are so volatile, so mercurial, and the season to season performance varies so much. To have a guy like him who's consistently good, you can consistently say he's going to be our eighth or ninth inning guy. I think that's really valuable. And I think it's going to be undervalued on the trade market. So I really wouldn't like to see him moved. I would just like to see the Cardinals approach how they deal with him differently. In my opinion, if Gallegos looks bad, you pull him immediately. As soon as the three batter minimum is up, when he allowed that home run against Houston, he should have been yanked immediately. But instead, Marmol left him in the game and he gave up the second home run. And all of a sudden, the game was out of reach. All of a sudden, it went from him blowing a 7 6 lead uh, and, and making it 8 7 and saying, okay, well, the Cardinals are going to have to score to all of a sudden now we're down three and the game's over. Um, and I just think the Cardinals have to change the way they use him because. I think if they used him correctly, his numbers would look a lot better this year. And they don't look that bad. I mean, he's given up seven home runs this year. And you said he's had, what, three multi-home run games? So that's mean, that means yeah, they come in bunches. one home run outside of those multi-home run games, which is really, really not good. Um, yeah, I mean, it comes in bunches. You, you have to understand, like, if he doesn't have his stuff, if he's not locating, Guy goes at multiple times this season, we've seen him have that that slider that kind of goes in on left-handed hitters and it's just untouchable right over their shoes. And it looks great. And we can locate that fastball at the bottom of the zone. He's one of the best there is, but when he's leaving his stuff up, when his breaking stuff doesn't break, he's terrible. It's like BP out there. All right. So now we're just going to get a quick discussion of the guys that we think are on our no trade list. So you've heard who were, we're keen to move, or at least one of us is keen to move. Um, but now I think you have to start with Lars Newbar. I think even if you come up with a compelling argument for why Lars Newtbar should be moved, it's not worth the time because the Cardinals don't think he should be moved. The Cardinals clearly value him a, a, an incredible amount. They have been very, very forward about saying they're not going to field offers for him. So I think Lars Newtbar is on this list specifically because of how the Cardinals value him, but also because of what he brings to the table. We've talked about him a bit this episode. He kind of does everything right. Yeah, another guy I think um, we both agreed upon shouldn't be traded is Brendan Donovan. Similar yep. to Lars Newbar, does everything right. And I don't think we're going to get a lot of value for him on the trade market. I think a lot of teams undervalue what he brings to the table. I know Yankee fans are offering like Clark Schmidt or whoever. Like, n- not that's not going to get it done uh, for for the car uh, for what the Cardinals are looking for. Um, I think we should pick a catcher who, who's untradeable right now. Um, for me, that's got to be Ivan Herrera. I, I really don't want to see Yvonne Herrera traded. Um, I think he's played himself onto most prospect lists. If you look at any analytical prospect list right now, uh, Yvonne Herrera is right up there in the top 20 or 30 in the sport. Obviously, he's not getting the attention that he got previously when he was on MLB Pipeline's list. 
um, because he made his major league debut and wasn't good. And he's aged out of most of those, uh, but he still hasn't exhausted his prospect status, doesn't have enough at-bats, whatever the case. I think Yvonne Herrera is going to be a really good player. I think it's obvious his bat-to-ball skills are great. Um, he, uh, he might be the best receiver on the team right now. And Kisner's a really good receiver, so that's a big deal. We also saw him develop his power in Memphis this year. He had like a 950 OPS when he got called up. Any way you slice it, he looks like he's going to be a really good player. Yeah, I think Contreras, actually, you've changed my mind a little bit. He sh- I think we should look to move him um, at the trade deadline. Um, I know he's looked pretty solid this season. Um, a lot of drama behind why we're not catching him or whatever. I think he's been handled really, really poorly. Yes. Um, and if you can find a spot, like someone that's willing to take him, take on that contract, I don't really think it's that big of a loss offensively. I think Herrera can pretty much do that. And defensively, it's going to be a major upgrade at the catch position. I don't really want to talk about the catcher position because we've had that locked down for the last, like, what, 20 years? So um, it's a little bit weird, um, but I think Herrera definitely would be a much more suitable replacement for Molina. I think he does a lot more of what – like, he comps to Yachty a lot more than Contreras ever has, um, and I don't know if Contreras is that great of a fit for this team. Yeah, it really sucks to be saying that now, to be having buyer's remorse. But I think you're right. Like Contreras, it was a big deal when he came here. And I still like Contreras. I love what he brings to the table. I love watching him. And I like having his bat in the lineup. But a a bat first catcher who's going to turn into a DH in year two is not what the Cardinals wanted. Um, And it's the buyer's remorse is strong right now. And I think if you can move him kind of like the Mike Leak deal where you got into that deal, didn't really like it and moved him early on that could be really big for the Cardinals, especially down the road, knowing that you're not paying Contreras $17.5 million in 2028 to be your designated hitter goes a long way. I think this is going to come out of left field. This is a guy who was definitely in my trade right now camp, and I'm on the fence, but I might not trade him, and it's Jordan Montgomery. I want you to hear me out here. So, I think if you don't trade Flaherty at the deadline, it's a huge miss. I don't think Flaherty brings that much. Like, like he's a good starter right now. He's one of your best three starters on this team, obviously, but he's so inconsistent and, and moving Flaherty makes a lot of sense. I don't think he's coming back to St. Louis. I, I don't know. And I also don't think he's a qualifying offer guy. So I think if you hold on to Flaherty, you're not going to get anything for him because you probably wouldn't even extend him the qualifying offer and he might accept it. Uh, Cause I don't think Flaherty right now is in a position to get a four or five year contract. Jordan Montgomery, on the other hand, I mean, would I rather have one of the, cause Jordan Montgomery, you need to trade him for pitching. The Cardinals don't need position player talent. They're not going to trade him for that. They're going to trade him for a pitching prospect. These other guys you can trade like, like Jordan Hicks, for example, you might be able to trade for starting pitching talent. That's really close because the teams that are looking to acquire bullpen help probably have strong rotations the teams that are looking to acquire rotation help don't have strong rotations, right? If you're looking for that depth, you're not just going to trade that depth away. So you're going to get someone that is, is one of these prospects that's kind of hanging around. And if you look at the pitching prospects in baseball right now, there's not a lot of them. Starting pitching is really hard to come by right now. I don't really know why, but we're definitely in a down season for starting pitching talent in MLB. I'm looking at the prospects that you could get back. Some of the guys the Yankees have had out there. Like, these are not interesting names to me. They're guys that have like five, 5.5 ERAs in double A. That's not anywhere near helping this team. Would I rather have that guy or would I rather do the qualifying offer, get a second round pick and let Randy Flores hand pick from anybody? Like probably that. I trust Randy Flores a lot. I think he's really good. So I think there's, and, and also I think, Montgomery is a lot more important to this team right now than Jack Flaherty. And if you want to talk about the Cardinals making a run, Jordan Montgomery has to be on the team to do so. Yeah, I think he's really good. One of the more overlooked arms um, in all of MLB. And I think if we can sign him to an extension, that would be really nice. Um, Out of the the guys that are walking, Flaherty, Hicks, Montgomery, he's the guy I want to keep uh, long term. I don't know if that's possible because I know he's a Boris client and just those guys test free agency, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I think we can definitely look to sign him, especially if we keep him um, around. I know Mo doesn't like signing free agents, but if it's an organizational guy like Montgomery, who he knows well, then it doesn't really matter. Does it? So like, I think, 
I think Montgomery's if you keep him around, he's a guy Mo would be willing to spend on. I don't know if I don't think he would come back if we trade him and then try to bring him back in the offseason. Yeah, great observation noting that he's a Boris guy probably means he's going to hit free agency, which is not what you want. Um, but I mean, I don't think he's going to sign anywhere for less than a hundred million dollars. I think Monty is going to get four or five years at 20 to 25 million. I mean, conservatively, you're talking about a $90 million contract, which would top the leak deal and the Contreras deal as the biggest deal the Cardinals have ever given out. I guess technically it's like reacquiring a guy. So you could compare it to the Matt holiday deal, but whatever. I mean, it's going to be a big deal and it's a lot of money and that's a lot of money you're going to spend for a guy that's not even going to be your ace. And then that makes me wonder, are the Cardinals even going to get an ace? And that's why I think you need to trade for an ace. Um, But, you know, overhauling the pitching staff is going to be really hard. (laughs) Mo did say he's going after starting pitching this, this off season. And um, he said, he's going to have to spend money on a, on a real free agent pitcher. And there's like three of those guys. So, um, I don't know if that's Montgomery, that would be a little bit disappointing in my opinion. Um, I think that that can't count as the free agent pitcher that you signed. Even if you do bring him back, you got to go out and get one of Nola Urias or uh, Shohei Otani. But uh, yeah, Mo's going to have a lot to do with this trade deadline. Do you think he's going to get one of those like Bieber, Bieber, I know is hurt, um, C, Sergio Alito type guys to try to bolster the rotation for next year? I think it's going to be really hard. Matching up with the White Sox gets easier and easier the longer Tim Anderson proves that he's just not a major league player, right? He doesn't have a single home run this year. I read somewhere, listen to this stat, you're going to love this. Last time um, he hit a home run, I think it was uh, Tariq Skubal or Matt Manning, one of the two. I can't remember who it is. That's totally my bad. Hadn't had Tommy John yet. That player then made three starts, got hurt, had Tommy John surgery, rehabbed, and has made two more starts. And Tim Anderson still hasn't hit a big league home run. Yeah, Tim Anderson and Javier Baez, I think, are like two of the worst players in the entire league right now. Tim Anderson is is not good at all. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the White Sox are obviously looking for middle infield help. The Cardinals have a lot of that. I think if I'm going to move Gorman, a C steal might make me want to do that. And, like, I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing ever to see Gorman, you know, knocking balls out of the park at guaranteed rate field, like, it'd at least be better than seeing him do it in Houston or something. So if I have to see him do it in Seattle, like if I have to do that, Cease would be the guy. And Cease is proven. He has a ton of strikeout stuff. I think he'd fit this staff really well as the ace. If you could do that, if you could have Cease re-sign Montgomery and then pair that with Michaelis, that'd be a really good top three. Well, everybody, thanks so much for joining us for a little bit of discussion about trade deadline, Cardinal surge. Um, we're all going to be watching the games, you know, uh, very closely coming up. Uh, whatever happens here is going to decide how the Cardinals approach this deadline, whether to sell, to buy, to do a little bit of both. Um, so, yeah, hopefully they can just keep winning ball games. I believe there's 11 games between now and the end of the month. If the Cardinals win, say, eight of those, which is a tall order, but if they do that, maybe we'll see um, everything change. Maybe we'll see them get back in this divisional race. But enjoy baseball over the next few months. Hopefully it's winning ball, um, but can't promise that with the way this year is gone. We'll see you guys real soon.